Welcome back everybody. Here we are with build update number five on the X3 XRCRR, the 2021. So if you guys have been keeping up so far all along, I have had four previous videos of build update. Um, things have slowed down a little bit and that's given that um, parts are on back order or been waiting and stuff. Um, but slowly but surely we're getting back on track. Uh, we got some more build update videos for this coming. But today's video, um, well, I'm going to show you guys. So here we go in a second. We're going to do some unboxing. We're going to look at some new, um, I'll tell you, just keep watching. Anyways, here we go. We got a little bit of wind today, so hopefully wind noise is not too bad. So anyways, as you see, I got four boxes right here. The name on them, Alba Racing. So, we're going to open these up. We're going to check them out. I'm going to show you what I got for the X3 XRC. So, at a portion in this video, um, there is some negativity about this. I'm going to let you know because I'm a positive review person. Uh, just to tell you the experience that I've had with getting these wheels and what to expect if you order them from a certain company. But first, we're going to get through here. We're going to open these boxes. And then... Um, yeah, then we'll try to mount up the tires and get them on there today. All right, so here we go. We're going to unbox some of these real quick. Um, like I said, I hope the wind noise is not too bad. You want to help me unbox these? You want to open them? All right. Let's get them knocked out. Here's the first one. See what we got. Open that. Open it. What do we got? Say, ooh. Wow. wow. Yeah. See that? Shiny. That's not going to last long with our driving, is it? High five. Boom. So, first piece of the puzzle in the box. We got a nice, shiny new beadlock ring. The piece of La Resistance. Bam. Got the, uh, so end up going with the, I think you pronounce it Baja, Baja, Baja Crushers, uh, beadlock wheels. These are a, these are a true three piece wheel. You can see. You can see that the seal in the middle. So you got this piece, this piece, and then you got the beadlock ring right here. Lines it up. Boom. So once we get them on and stuff, I'll discuss more about it. Party animal. Party animal. So with these, they are a uh, 15 by 7 setup. Um, basically, what's kind of already on the Can-Am that comes from factory is a 15-inch setup. But I think that the factory ones is a 6 plus 1. Uh, the next step up is a 5-2. These are actually a 4-3. So this will give me a little bit of a wider width. Uh, a little bit. I'll go past the 72-inch with these. Um, I'll take a measurement to see how wide it is ultimately. If not in this video, but the next one. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to finish unboxing these and uh, we're going to roll the tires out that we have for them. If you watched any of the previous videos, you might be able to see what tire selection we're going with. But real quick, I'm going to knock these out and I'm going to get them all laid out and show you what they look like. All right, so I got all four wheels laid out with the rings laying on top of them. Uh, we're going to go ahead and roll these here tires out and show you what we got going on. And then we're going to start the process of trying to get them assembled. Um, they actually do come with, if you can see, their own valve stems. 
So hopefully they have cores in them. I've not checked them. So we're going to get them together. They do have hardware. All of them come with hardware um, for the bolts and stuff. Um, if you look on the website, it's got the recommended torque spanning, spec settings. I am going to look that up uh, here in a second. I got it saved on my phone. We'll go over it and I'll let you guys know um, what those settings are. Now look, before I go any further, here's that part that's kind of annoying in other people's videos, but if you help us do it, it helps us and gives us motivation to keep continuing to make these videos. I like doing them. So, just real quick, if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. If you don't like the video, let us know down in the comments why. If you don't like any of the other videos, just comment below why. I'm always open for improvement. Uh, if you find something you like, if you like these wheels, just drop down in the comments that you like them. If you have them, tell us about them. I like reading the comments. I like interacting with people. So, that's my quick message. A little annoying sometimes to always see that and hear that, but it actually helps the channel grow. So, like, subscribe, leave us a comment. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook. I'll drop a link below to both of those. Right? Hey, high five. Tell our viewers, high five. Bam! You know, make things special. Help us out here. We like to grow and we like to show. Oh man. What do we got here? A little something, something, something. So, tire selection for these wheels. Oh man, they're gonna like these, ain't they? Wow. Let's open them up and see what we got. There, you gotta help me. You gotta help me. You gotta help me. If you guessed it, you guessed it right. We're going to go with Yeehaw Zillas. Got herself a fresh set in which I ordered months ago to anticipate that these wheels were going to be here a lot sooner. Also, Rockzillas have been hard. Rockzillas have been hard to get a hold of last year. So, set up, we're going to be running uh, 15 by 7, 4 plus 3s on 35, 10, 15. So, Sticky Boys, I love Zillas. I know people are. Probably like, ah, find another tire, do another tire. These are proven. They work. Uh, about every one of us run them because we ran other uh, wheel and tire setup. We ran other tires, but carnivores, carnivores suck. Uh, ATV warriors suck. Um, trying to think of some of the other ones. But, yeah, these right here are tried. They're proven. Uh, there's no reason to waste money. It's not like it's a sponsorship. So yeah, so I'm gonna roll the rest of these tires out and we'll start trying to get them mounted up. Let's talk about these tires real quick. Where did I get them from and how much? All right, I got these last year, I think it was in October, from DennisKirk.com. Uh, they were reasonably priced, they were under $200 a tire. Uh, originally, the Maxxis, if you don't know about Rockzilla's, uh, Rockzillas and the smaller sizes come in a harder compound and a sticky compound. The sticky compound will be slightly more. These are supposed to be a sticky compound. I, from all I can gather from the Maxxis site is the 35s only come in stickies. So the best price and availability at the time I got from Dennis Kirk. Now there is some websites out there that price gouge severely they buy these they stockpile them people run in like ammo sales right now and just buy them all up and you know they're in a rush they go on back order thanks to the whole covid ordeal so these websites uh companies will sit on them when everybody runs out they'll come out and they'll charge over 300 dollars a piece for these tires um that's a smart play in business wise, but for the consumer, that really sucks. So you guys should stop doing that. Because if you start doing that, I'm probably more than likely gonna call you out. Now, 
Let's talk about these wheels. We've already went over the positive side. I got my wheels. Downside. I ordered these in October. Um, I ordered them from UTV Source. The reason why that I ordered them from UTV Source is, is because they had like a 5 or 10% discount. Uh, their, their shipping was a little bit cheaper. And on their website, this is the part that kind of pissed me off, is on their website, they said they are two weeks out in October. Today is February 24th, 25th. I received these wheels um, this past Saturday. Today is Wednesday, so I received these uh, this past Saturday, which is 140 some days. Now, 17 days, seven plus seven, seven days in a week, that's 14 days. If you wanted to say two weeks business time, uh, there's 10 days, Monday through Friday, that's five days, so five plus five is 10. It's two weeks, not 140 something days. I can look up the, the days exact. I was looking them up last night. That's what pissed me off. Now I stayed in, I tried to stay in communication with them and update. So after the first initial two weeks, uh, probably got on to week three. I said, hey, you know, what's an update? Then it was like, oh, they're on back order till such and such. And then it just trickled down. Back order, back order, back order, back order, back order. It is now February. I ordered these in October. I ordered these on their website for the simple fact that they said they were just back dated two weeks. Now this whole time that I've watched their website, they're still doing the same shit. It says two weeks out. They're not two weeks out. They're months out. So the last time I asked, I originally was going to get blue beadlock rings. The last time that I was asked, I was completely fed up. And it's bad. I hate being rude and I hate being nasty. But I had to get rude and had to get nasty to get my wheels. I paid my money. I understand COVID, back order, things that's going on right now. But that's completely unacceptable for the way that you advertise. And it's not just for me. There's one of the guys in the group that ordered two separate products. One of them he still hasn't received yet and he's been waiting months for. And he keeps getting a run around too. And the other one... He finally showed up at his house with no shipping orders. Oh yeah, that's another thing. These showed up at my house. I had no shipping location. Didn't know that they were coming or not. I just got told, hey, there's a really big ass box on your porch. So they're not very good at their drop ship communications because they are a drop shipper. And I don't think they produce or provide any parts. So UTV source, not happening. Not buying shit from me again. Um, that's my, my review. Uh, everything was up and good until this. Uh, the two parts that Jay ordered, and Joel even tried to buy a cage. And after he initially paid for the cage, they told him that it would be an extra six weeks on top of the weeks that they quoted him, and they wanted like another $500 for shipping. So, no UTV source from here on out. So that took forever. So we got them all mounted up, ready to 
Put some air in them, try to get them blew up. See how that works out and goes. So we got the meaty boys completely mounted up, ready to go. Made it back home uh, real quick before I take the old wheels off and put the new wheels on. We're going to do some, some measurements. So I've, I've not made any adjustments to the suspension whatsoever as far as ride height, adjusting the coils and stuff. So we're going to measure width now and height in the front and the rear and see how much ground clearance and width we pick up with the change of tires. So with our handy dandy helper painter's tape, which hopefully stays for now, so I can at least get a measurement. So we are sitting right at, to the end of the tire, to the end of the tire. So let's see, focus right here is about, is right at 72 inches. So on the outside of the tire, we're running uh, a little over 73. So now let's do our ground clearance. So just off the center point of the front skid plate that goes under the diff, um, I know from shock therapy, you're supposed to measure your back suspension mounting point, which is just right back there. So I split the difference, went through this little groove in the A-arm skid plate. Um, we're at about 14 and three quarters from the bottom of the skid plate. If you implement this little groove right here, then you're going to be right around 14 inches. So somewhere between 14 and 15 if you want to count this groove right here. So now we're going to run back and measure the back. So again from the point that doing the old shock therapy springs, uh, the mounting point that they wanted or the um, point that they wanted you to measure from is the very back of the skid plate right here, which as you can see, if I can get it to focus, is roughly 13 and a half inches on the rear. So that's a total difference of over an inch from front to back. Um, so yeah, let's get these wheels and tires mounted up on here and see what we got. All right, something that I'm gonna do to see a lot of people talk about and debate is a uh, weight. So I'm gonna try to get the variables as close as I can. Um, this one's PSI set on 10. This is the 15 by seven Alba built aluminum wheel with the Maxxis Rockzilla's 3510-15s. Now the factory set up is a different tire, but it's a Maxxis Liberty uh, 32 by 1015 on the factory. I think these are six plus one, the factory B locks. So let's see show you that that one is on 10 psi also so real quick i'm going to try to weigh these and uh get a close reference to see hoagie doggy so we got the wheels on we got everything set i think 7 psi in the rear 7.5 in the front uh to start with that if i have any issues i'll probably run them down to 5 psi but i took it out for a drive to see how it felt things got plenty of power on its own uh, to keep up with the weight difference. I let the suspension settle. So now we're gonna run back and do some measurements. We'll do width measurements and we shall do uh, ground clearance measurements. So let's hop in here, get her back to the garage. Now something that I did notice, if you can see the front tire and the front fender, yeah, so these are Mud Buster XLs if you watch the other build videos. So I'm going to have to find me some extensions because these are pretty much going to become useless. So if you go to turn, let me activate the. So if you go to turn, like literally, they're going to be slinging stuff all over you. So that's something to keep in mind if you go 4 plus 3s and 35s. Alright, using the same method. Uh, tape on the outer lug of the tire itself. I don't know if that's the proper way to measure, but we're going to measure to the outer lug over here. So actually, we have gained a width of roughly 77 inches. That's awesome. Now, let's get down here and do the ground clearance. 
All right, so on this point, we are uh, slightly over 17 inches of ground clearance from the front skid plate. Uh, should be close to 17 with the initial hump right here on the frame. So that's a pretty good gain. Now let's go check the back. All right, picking it up again. So we are just over 15 inches on this skid plate right here. So that's a significant difference between the front and the rear. I feel like that's over two inches. So I might adjust the rear shocks a little bit. Um, but yeah, so a total gain. I think it's about two inches on the front and the rear, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah. Anyways, I hope this helps somebody out. If you want to go with the same wheel and tire selection as I did, um, Alba Racing, uh, heed my warnings like getting something from a uh, UTV source. Um, 35 Zillas, I'm excited to try them out. I know that Joel, Jay, and Brian has 35 Zillas. So I'm ready to get back to riding. Riding season is about hot. Riding season's all the time for us, but work's been killing us. So speaking of, uh, channel. So like I said in the beginning, like, subscribe, comment. Uh, if there's something that you feel like I missed or I should have done on here, uh, drop me a comment below and let me know. Uh, I'm not perfect, can't do everything uh, straight out the gate. But then, let's see, we got merchandise. Yes, so below is a link to Teespring for merchandise for helping the channel, um, helping us do. Uh, if you want to rep, uh, you know, rep us, show your support, everything. We got all kinds of stuff on there. Just go on the website, click around, and check it all out for yourself. But anyways. Um, that should be the end for this episode. This is build video number five. There will be a build num video number six and possibly a build video number seven. So peace.